software directory there should be a postgres sql jdbc for jar file which is the jdbc driver for postgres sql that should be present uh, so all you have to do is uh, copy the file right click and say copy and then uh, go to eclipse so in eclipse uh, we have a project which we had created yesterday so that project has a if you expand that project you will find a web content directory within that expand it and you have a web inf and there is a lib directory inside so right click on that uh, lib directory and paste paste the jar file that we just copied so once you paste it you can see that that jar file appears with the yeah. lib directory everyone has completed this step so i'll move on to the next so the next step is to create a class which uses this jar file so go to file new other and select class and say next give give some name say have i given yeah it can be just a test test class so we created a class now uh, we have a sample uh, jdbc program provided in moodle you can browse to that so you can copy the contents of this class file of this java file yes it's given as a link in the here in this third step Uh, yeah the class name can be renamed if uh, you i mean class name is uh, secondary i mean uh, you can just name it to whatever the file name is so you can so now here i have called the class as test and i yeah the sample jdbc program paste paste it onto the test.java and change the class name to test the class name and the file name should match that's all so you can go through that program to it's a simple program which uh, first first loads the postgres sql driver for this line to execute the jar file that we added has to exist in the library and you have a class the contents of the class should be this file and then change the so there's a driver manager dot get connection line there uh, enter the database name that you have created yesterday with the university schema so it's i have called it 20 dbms 2010 and then enter the username and password you can use any user that you have created yesterday who has access to the university schema so what is the so you have the file name and the class name as the same So after you paste it uh, go to the line uh, driver manager dot get connection i have highlighted it yeah so there in place of my db so that is the url that is that is how it knows which postgresql database to connect to so we are saying local host and uh, we have to give the database name yeah it depends on what you have created yesterday Uh, we created a database in pg admin <laughs> yes this is the format of the url so uh, yeah so this is basically the host this is where the server is running postgres sql host you can give ip address also yes it can be any 
it is just to identify where is the server which is running the PostgreSQL database. Port, it uses the default port. It knows the port. So, for normal usage, you do not need to specify the port. So, we specify the database name here and then give the username and password. First, first day, the one that you created in a PSQL. Uh, where you pasted the, uh, where you created the university schema on the first day. <laughs> you can go back to PG admin and uh, browse there. You can check it from there. So I have given Postgres and one two three because that's the that's the password I have used in my my machine. So no no, this is the uh, password for the Postgres user. So this is this is just the example. This in uh, in it is the same username and password which you used to connect using PG admin three. It's the same username and password. No no, it was there was a command that everyone ran slash password Postgres and set a password. So. So whatever password you gave there, that's what you should be using. Everyone has given their own, so there's n we haven't uh, stuck to convention there. Then how did you connect using uh, PG admin? So you would have used some password to connect. You can change the password again. You can just okay. Uh, if you have forgotten the password, so the the only uh, so what you can do is again change the password, reset the password. Uh, using uh, the manual, I mean, using the steps that we had given in uh, in yesterday's uh, in day one. So in the day one tutorial, we had this uh, step for changing the password, administering PostgreSQL. So you have you will have to go through these three steps and set the set a new password. It won't ask for the old password. You can just enter a new password for the Postgres user. And then you can come back to and then you can use that new password. So once, so I will move, uh, move ahead and for those who have not, uh, who have forgotten the password, maybe I will uh, come back again. Maybe. So once you enter the username and password, uh, you can look at, so you can uh, in the program below below that line we have a connection dot prepare statement. There is a line of code which says connection dot prepare statement and passes a SQL query with a question mark. So that query has a name university dot student. So that is basically saying the schema name dot table name. But in our case, we do not have to give the schema name. You can just say select star from student. It will use the default public schema which for uh, it will use the default public schema for the user, Postgres user. So you can just change it to select star from student where department name equal to question mark. So that is that is the end of that, that is all the changes that are required. So now you can uh, once you are done with this, you can run this program. So you can right click, right click on the file, say run as and Java application. So if there is any error, it is not if it is not able to connect. It gives an error. So I get a message that I have connected. So this is the system, this is the print line command which we had, uh, which we have in our program. connected. 
So once it's connected, it's actually asking for a department name. So you can enter a department name in the console. What is the Sorry? So once, uh, so how many of you have been able to successfully establish a connection? Okay, uh, as soon as the connection is established, you get this message here below, you are connected. And below that, you can, you, you have to enter this line. You have to enter biology with B uppercase. So it's basically asking for a department name. You enter biology and hit enter, it lists out all the, all the students who belong to that department. This is just a toy example where we fire one, one small query and show the results. So if, if, uh, if the connection is fine, you will get a list of students from the database. Sorry. Yeah, whoever. So it depends on how much data exists. I have a large data set, so it shows me a lot of records. So if you are able to successfully run this, you can now go through the program and try to understand how, what the code is, what the program is trying to do. And maybe you can change, change the query and uh, try out some things. And uh, there is an assignment corresponding to this. Assignment 5, so this, this starts, gets you started on assignment 5, so uh, this gets a, this gave a sample program which connects to the database and gives some results. So now you can actually look at assignment 5 and try to modify this program or write, uh, so write similar programs which do uh, similar, which fire queries and display results. So first, uh, for the JDBC program itself, uh, actually we should have added it in our uh, sample JDBC program, but uh, uh, the way ex we are handling the exception is not exactly very, not a very nice way. So uh, if you open the sample JDBC program, towards the end of the file, there is a catch clause, catch SQL exception, and we are just printing out uh, could not connect. So that is actually hiding what the real error message is and whatever the error is, it just says could not connect. So instead, uh, so you can, uh, so just you can comment out that line or remove that line and uh, add this line, I'll type it out. So you can say SQL exception, SQL E dot uh, print stack trace, semicolon. Is it visible till the? Yeah, it, it gives the error message on top along with the stack trace. So this gives a detailed, uh, the, the actual error that is that is happening on the server. So uh, please make these changes in, uh, changes in your the program. The option is just to print, uh, system out print line SQLE, which yeah. will give you the error message without the, it's often good enough. So this is also an option. Yeah, this first one is more detailed than the second one. You so you can just add. Uh, just do both one at a time. I'll yeah. make one error. Make an error. So here is a situation where there's an error in the query. So I'll make a mistake uh, where there's the uh, invalid column name. The, the column <laughs> DEPT does not exist. So here it connected successfully and now it's asking for a department name. 
and when I actually enter the department name, it gives an, uh, so now it gives a exact error message saying column DEPT does not exist. So, for uh, any such syntax errors in SQL, you will get a <coughs> more meaningful error message. So, Thank you.